Hi, hi, all salmon. Today we are going to do an acrylic painting of a pig and a pancake. It's inspired by one of my favorite Norwegian fairy tales. For a guide today, I'm using this plastic container that is round. It is three inches across. Our canvas is 10 by eight. And then we will be using graphite pencils to make some tracings and some drawings before we start to paint. And we are using a size 12 flat brush, a size six round tip brush, and a size one liner. All of the paints that I'm using, except for the black and the white, are Josonia. This is Colony Blue. This is just a craft paint white and a craft paint black. This is Bisque color, which is Josonia's. We have Brown Earth, Raw Sienna, and Unbleached Titanium. A couple other things that you're going to want is you want your paper towel and your water bin, of course. You'll want a hair dryer to speed up drying times unless you have plenty of time to do this project and then you might want to have some scratch paper or some drawing pads to practice the shape of your pig. I'm not going to go through that on this tutorial so that's up to you. Okay so there's not a whole lot of prepping that you need to do. Uh, it's pretty much just ready to paint right from the get-go. Now if you're using Josonia's paints you might want to wet your brush a little bit and tap tap it dry because Josonia's point paints are goosh. You can see that the titanium white and the black are a little bit runnier and that's because those are not Josonia's. That's just a basic craft paint. You're going to grab your size 12 flat brush and you're going to be painting from the top all the way down until about three fingers widths length on the bottom. That's going to make room for our little um, fence line there. You're going to dip your brush into the colony blue and you're going to want to start painting the edges and uh, the front. So I'm going to start with just the edges here. And we're just gonna kind of tap it on. We're not going to cover the entire thing. And then once you get to the front of the canvas, you're just gonna paint some X's. They don't have to be super solid. They don't have to be, you know, like perfect X's or whatever. We're just covering the canvas in kind of like this lazy type of directional painting. So just putting some X's uh, every which way here on the canvas, leaving that three fingers width on the bottom. And then once you have a good portion of the canvas front covered, you're going to take the tip of your size 12 brush and you're going to dip it into the white. And you can mix it up a little bit with the colony blue and make a lighter shade and go in and start filling in some of the gaps. So we're kind of getting this crisscross pattern, but it's in different shades. So it kind of looks like a blurred background. You can also take the tip, the corner of your flat tip brush and dip it into the white or the blue, depending on what is mostly on the, the brush, and then start making some two-toned strokes as well. And then um, just keep filling up the canvas until you've got the top portion completely covered. Again, leaving that bottom for the fence post. This should leave you with a multicolored, kind of like blurred background. And you can really just kind of alter it to your preference. So if you feel like there's one area that has too much wife, white excuse me you can give that area uh, one or two really quick x brush strokes um, if you feel like it has too much blue you can add a little bit of white to your brush and just kind of play around with it and be really creative and alter this to your preference
Okay, so before you start working on this bottom plank here of the fence line, you're gonna want to dry the edge line there so that you, when you go over it with this uh, skin tone base color, you are not mixing the paints together. But I'm gonna take the skin tone base and I'm going to cover up the remaining portion of the bottom half, um, going about three fingers width up and you can also take this opportunity to kind of make the line with your paintbrush. So make sure that you're getting all of the blank canvas completely covered. And um, then we're gonna let that dry because we are going to use a technique to um, expose this color uh, that's gonna be underneath a darker color. I'm adding a little bit of the raw sienna here at the top so we get some variation of color when we make the little lines in the, um, in the wood post. Now you are going to want to dry this when uh, you are um, about to go on with the brown, but I'm drying it here just because I made a little mistake. I did not dry my blue before going into the browns, um, and so I'm just correcting my mistake. It's all paint. We all make mistakes. It's okay, <laughs> um, but I'm gonna continue using the raw sienna here on the top to give some variation of color in the, um, in the wood grain. And uh, after that, we will dry it and put the dark brown on top of it. So one of the things that I do remember growing up was my father has this very thick leather book that is filled with Norwegian fairy tales by as Bjornsson and Mo. And I loved looking at this book. I've always had a thrill for fairy tales. And one of the... Um, the stories that is in this book is called Pankaka, which is a Norwegian tale that uh, kind of resembles the gingerbread man. And actually, I have it in my belief that the gingerbread man was actually inspired by uh tales like Pankaka um, over from the European area. There are several other fairy tales that are similar that are much older than The Gingerbread Man. The Gingerbread Man came out in a magazine in America in I think the 1950s if I'm not mistaken. So I'll give you a little bit more information on that story, but um, in a little bit. But yeah, my memories of this big leather book with all of these fairy tales, and there were some drawings in there and whatnot. Of course, it's all written in Norwegian, so I couldn't read them myself because I don't. I do speak Norwegian now, but I did not back then, and so it was you know, something that I had to ask uh, for translation with. Now we are going to put the brown earth color on top and we're going to make sure that it's pretty solid all the way through. Uh, if your dark brown color is a little bit dry or a little bit thick, don't uh, 
you know, you, you want to make sure that you're putting it on a little bit thicker so that it doesn't completely dry all the way very fast. Acrylic paint can dry rather quickly. Um, and if you find that it's drying quicker than you like, then go ahead and add just a couple drops of water and, and mix it in with your palette there. Um, and try to just adhere as, you know, a thick layer of this brown earth color uh, onto the bottom of the canvas because immediately following adding the brown, we are going to be adding the wood grain strokes into the pattern. Okay, so now that the paint is set and it's still wet, we are going to be taking our liner brush, but we're going to be using the top of the liner brush to kind of scrape and reveal some of that dry, lighter shades of brown to make the wood grain in the wood. Uh, if you wanted to, you could reverse the colors so that you have a lighter shade of wood and darker uh, rings, so to speak, on on the the piece of wood but I just chose to do a darker wash for the wood graining um, and so just keep scraping back and forth you can make little circular patterns you can make straight patterns you can make wavy patterns whatever you feel like looks good um, and if you make a mistake just go back over it a little bit with a little bit of the uh, dark brown uh, brown earth color Okay, so it's time to pull out that hair dryer or just let this dry naturally. So we will be back as soon as I get this dry. I had such a interesting time coming up with this design because I really wanted to express the storytelling of this fairy tale and yet keep it simple enough for somebody who is relatively beginner level to be able to do. So this was my compromise, was not making it about the actual fairy tale, but just making a cute little portrait that is a, a pig with a pancake in its mouth and I think it's adorable and it's a perfect uh, first beginner project. So we're going to be taking our little round guide here and our pencil. I'm going to be using the white graphite pencil and we are going to be putting the top portion of the head. So we're going to need at least two fingers widths uh, below the very top of the canvas. And then we're going to move the guide just a little bit down and to the left and then a little bit over to the right so that we're kind of getting like this triangle type of structure here that's kind of like these little mounds and then we're going to kind of outline the whole thing and this is going to be our face shape. Now, if you are too nervous to do this first on the canvas, you can definitely grab your uh, sketch pad and do this a couple of times. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. And then we're going to take the 
container and we're going to draw the outline for the pancake. I chose to make this a little bit bigger um, so you could look around your house and see if you have anything that would be slightly bigger than three inches but I just used this one because I already had it on hand and I traced a, another bigger um, circle around it just using that as a guide. I'm going to draw in the nose here which is a jelly bean shape and then I think we are going to do the ears which nope we're doing the arms next. So I just draw a downward angle from the neckline on either side and then when I reach the plank then I start going a little bit more south. I, I change the angle a little bit and draw the hoofs in. It doesn't have to be extremely accurate. When you are starting the ears, you want to take two or three fingers and place it at the top of the head, space it out, so that'll, that'll be the top of the ears. And then to get the bottoms, you will line it up with the top of the eyes. I apologize for being out of shot here, but that's what I was trying to exemplify, is that the bottom marks will be where the ears uh, meet the the bottom of the ears meet the head and then to find the point of the tip of the ear you're just going to go three to four finger widths out and you're just going to go a little bit below the top of the canvas you're going to make some s curves one on the top on one ear so it looks like an s and then a the bottom curve is going to be just a regular curve going down to that other place that you marked. And then on this side, the top is two curved lines and the bottom is the S. So you, there's a slight little curve there right at the tip um, to make that curve. Okay. So now we are ready to mix some paint for our pig. Now, what I do is I take a large, large glop of the white. So you're gonna get your size 12 brush. You're gonna take a little bit of the raw sienna. I wound up not having enough raw sienna here. Uh, and you're going to mix it with just a smidge of the pink because sometimes that red can be overwhelming. You're gonna keep mixing until you get a light pink that has kind of like a twinge of brownness. Um, you wanna keep it, you know, pink, but you, you don't want it to be like a super, super bright color. Um, but the brightness is totally on your preference. Uh, so just keep mixing until you get some sort of a light muted pink that uh, meets your expectations. Once you have the color that you want, you can go ahead and apply it to your brush and then start to fill in the background or the skin of your little piggy here. So I chose to fill in the face first and then you fill in the ears and the arms and you can kind of let that dry and see if you want to put a second layer on before you do anything else. Um, or if you're you're liking how it feels then we can move on to the next step so if you haven't heard the actual fairy tale of pon kaka uh, this is it, it's very similar to the gingerbread man and i imagine that you can pretty much guess that the pancake takes on the character of the gingerbread man and the story goes that this you know this motherly lady who you know lives on a farm with her very hungry children decided to make this very uh, large tasty pancake for her kids to eat and once it was done it jumped up and rolled out 
um, spinning all the way through the farm and the forest and came through uh, meeting all these little farm characters and whatnot that all wanted to eat him. So they were all chasing after him. And the slyest animal of all is the one who finally gets the pancake, and that is the pig in this case. I know in the gingerbread man we have the sly fox, but pigs are pretty smart and and they are uh, deserving of this spot too, and pigs are very important to Norwegian culture, so it makes a lot of sense to me that in this version it would be a pig. Okay, so go ahead and rinse your brush, get it a little bit dry, and we're gonna go into the unbleached titanium. And we are going to fill in the beginning of the pancake. If you look at a pancake from its side on its rim, you will see that it is a lighter color than the top and bottom of the pancake. So this is why we are using this for a base and then we're going to be shading it later. Now you may notice that the pancake is kind of going creeping up right into the bottom of the face line and that is because it is sitting in the pig's mouth. So we are going to be painting the mouth nose over this after we get it dry. Once that is dry, we are going to not even rinse our brush and dip a corner into the burnt, nope, raw sienna. And we are just gonna start kind of mixing that pancake top there, making it a little bit darker. You can add more raw sienna as you go along, making it darker on one side and lighter on the other. Just shade it to the way that you feel the most comfortable keeping part of the outside edge that light color. I did have a moment where life kind of got a hold of me here and so I had to step away from the painting and it dried as along with the palette. So you're going to see the uh, video clip kind of uh, change position here. And then um, I have reset my palette and we are going to continue shading the pancake. Now something you can do is flip your 
object around your your painting around to kind of see if it looks uh, like the proportions are right and if you don't want to do it with your wet palette you can always take a picture with your phone and then flip the picture around sometimes I feel like I get a better uh, viewpoint from my phone than I do uh, just sitting there. You can also take a step back um, or a few step backs if you have room in the place that you're painting to kind of get another perspective. This is the very fascinating thing to me about fairy tales is that they come from a place in history where time was almost kind of frozen and there's hints of our culture within these fairy tales. Pancakes are very important to Norwegian culture. They they have several different types of flatbreads in uh, our culture from you know the typical breakfast pancake to um, the uh, leafsa and uh, lumpa and all of these pan-based breads. Norwegian pancakes are a little bit thinner than American flapjacks but they're also a little bit thicker than like a French crepe. Um, my grandfather had his own recipe that was a little bit sweeter than the traditional Norwegian pancake um, and uh, it is a family favorite. Okay, and since I had to walk away from this painting, I had to reset my palette, which means that I got a different tone with my mixing of paint than I did uh, a few minutes ago in the prior clip. And so I went back over my pig because I didn't want there to be discrepancies in the color of the pig. This one wound up being a little bit more reddish um, than I would have preferred, but it still looks cute. So uh, I'm, I'm still happy with it. Uh, we are going to add a little bit more color into the pancake. You can see that I took some unbleached titanium and I started filling it in a little bit more and then I was going to shade the pancake a little bit more gradually with that raw sienna um, to make it a little bit darker and more full. Once I get it to the point where it's shaded the way that I want, and you'll see that I'm shading it by starting out really thick with raw sienna and then kind of just slowly adding just a little bit so that it kind of gets um, shaded as I go along. And then, um, and then once I get it to a point that I like, then I take the raw sienna and I kind of tap it out on my palette and I do these kind of like taps over the pancake to give it some texture. I made a, I'm, I'm not sure if I actually did it here or if I did it at the end, but um, it gives it a little bit of texture and it makes it look uh, more straightforward that it's a pancake.
And here we go. You can see me kind of tapping into that raw sienna there uh, just on the tip of the brush. And then I kind of tap it out just a little bit on the palette and then I make some texture onto the pancake itself. So we're going to give our size 12 brush a break. We're going to let that sit in our water bin and we're going to do the round brush next, the size 6 round. Okay, now it's really your choice what kind of a brown you want to use. I'm using raw sienna here, but you could have used the um, brown earth or maybe just a little like tip of the black to make your shadows in the pig. And we're gonna mix it with some of the leftover pink paint that you had. So we're gonna take just a little bit of the brown and we're gonna kind of add the pink until you get a color that you feel like makes a nice shadow for your pig. And we're gonna put it in areas where it makes sense that there would be a shadow. So this would be in the ears going around. I leave, I leave part of the top uh, exposed and part of the bottom exposed. We're gonna put some shadow just right underneath the ears and then outside of the eyes, right outside of the face, right above the bridge of the nose, underneath the chin, and then I have these little fat rolls that I have on one side where um, we're making some crease lines there. Just have fun and play around with it. Think about where would the shadows be under the arms, um, that type of thing, and uh, really just kind of have fun and play around.
we're going to grab our graphite pencil again and very lightly we're going to sketch on the outline of the nose. Now the nose is kind of shaped like a jelly bean with the curvature of the jelly bean at the top. That will be the tip of the nose and then the bean part is going down over the pancake. We're going to kind of put the eyes in the center of the face lined up along where you can see how the cheeks get wider here. You're going to line up the bottom of the eyes with the cheek line there and then um, you'll be able to know where you're going to put your shadow for the bridge of your nose. And then they're going to put a really thin smile coming out from behind the pancake just underneath the jelly bean so uh, you know where to fill in the smile. After you do the drawing in here, it's really up to you if you want to rinse that round brush or not. Um, it has raw sienna mixture in it with some pink, um, but we're going to be mixing the color of the nose. Uh, so if you still have remnants in your brush, it'll be a little bit more muted color. Uh, if you want a really bright uh, nose color, color and ear color then you might want to rinse and dry your brush it's completely up to you Now it depends on how cartoonish you want this piggy to look, but I'm gonna give you a, a different example than what I have painted above. We're gonna make this nose a little bit brighter, so I'm gonna add a little bit more red than last time, and we're gonna make it a really nice bright pink. Um, be sure to add just a teeny bit of uh, raw sienna, and it will kind of mute it out just enough so that it doesn't look too overwhelming. And you're gonna fill in that jelly bean area. After you get this completely filled in, you're gonna let that dry. And while it's drying, you're going to take some more of that pink and you're going to fill in the crevices of the ears, give it a little bit of color balance here. At this point, I am going back and rinsing my brush because I'm going to add some of the shadow color into the bridge of the nose. Now that I know where the eyes and the nose are sitting, it'll be a lot easier to add some of that shadow there. going to give the cheeks just a little bit of color so I'm taking just a little bit more white and toning this bright pink down a little bit and we're going to kind of 
give the cheeks a little bit more color. If you feel like it's too bright, you can add a little bit more white to your brush, mix it back up with the pink and kind of like tone it down. Um, and if you feel like it's too bright, bright, you can add just a little bit more raw sienna or um, even some some of the bisque color and tone it down just a little bit so it's not so bright. Um, you're not really gonna have to use a lot of paint and you can keep your brush, brush kind of dry so that you're just kind of putting like this suggestion of a color in. Okay, so you're gonna rinse your brush again and you are going to start working with the black. First, we are going to fill in the hooves shapes. So these hooves have two points on the fronts and it can be kind of, you know, just like a little triangle with a little bit of a, a curve on the bottom side of it to make it look like it's a rounded foot. And then we're going to go up and put in the smile and the nose holes and we're going to make two little beady eyes where we drew them in. And then you're going to take the tip of your brush and go over the line where his smile is. When my father came over to the States, uh, he would make these pancakes uh, that, you know, were my grandfather's recipe. And I don't think I ever really made them when I was growing up, but my, uh, my mother took over the making of the pancakes once she learned the recipe. And I have made it for my kids and my family on several occasions now that I am an adult. Um, and these pancakes are so tasty that uh, most people, when they're first introduced to them, they will add some jelly or some powdered sugar to them. And then once they realize that they're very buttery and crispy on the edges and they're just, they're just good to like pick up and, and eat, uh, without putting anything on them. Uh, and I think that kind of makes our own family recipe um, quite special. Now on the part of the eye that is nose facing, we are going to draw kind of like a line that goes over the edge of each eye. So the top portion is gonna look like eyelashes and the bottom portion is gonna look like the bottom of the eye. And you can add a couple more eyelashes if you desire. Um, something that I did not film on this and it's up to you is I added eyebrows to the previous pig. So if you wanna take that raw sienna and with the liner brush, now's your opportunity to fill that in before we start getting into like the gray tones. Now the gray tones, I just took some black and I mixed it up with the pink and I'm just going underneath some of the shadowy areas like underneath the tips of the ears and underneath the chin um doing again once in the you know in the little creases of the fat rolls and stuff like that and i'm just kind of making a little bit more accentuated shadows and this portion is up to you um, on how you want to do it so just use your own creativity. Thank you. 
are going to take our liner brush, rinse it out, and go into the white. And we are going to make two dots on each eye. The top dot should be bigger. The bottom dot should be smaller. And then we are going to take the white and do some highlights. So we're going to do the top of the head, the top of the ears, uh, the tops of each of the cheeks, the hooves, we are going to give them a little bit of a highlight, and on the tip of the nose. This is where the sunlight would be hitting it. You can also do the, um, the tops of the arms. That would be another good place. And the cheeks. And so there you have it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I hope you enjoyed my little ramblings about this pig and pancake and the inspiration of Pan Kaka, the Norwegian fairy tale. And we'll see you next time. Hada!